Hi there. In this video on perfect competition, we're just going to say a little bit about the links between a perfectly competitive market and the concept of economic efficiency. In previous videos, we've looked at the short run equilibrium and the adjustment to the long run equilibrium. But what about economic efficiency in the market? Well, there are three types of efficiency that economists are mainly concerned about. The first is allocative efficiency. How does this stack up in perfect competition? Well, we find that in both the short and the long run in this market, the price that's charged equals the marginal cost of supply. And therefore, allocative efficiency is achieved. At the ruling price in the market, consumer and producer surplus are maximised and, and no one can be made better off without making someone else at least worse off. This is known as a Pareto optimum allocation of resources. In other words, in simple day-to-day -day terms, competition keeps the price down close to the marginal cost of supply. The consumer isn't getting ripped off by a monopolistic producer. What about productive efficiency? Productive efficiency happens when the equilibrium output is supplied at the minimum average cost of production. And yes, that is also achieved in perfect competition. For example, firms with quite high unit costs might not be able to justify staying in the industry as the forces of competition drive down the market price. So in the long run, we're at the lowest point of the average cost curve. And yes, perfect competition does leave, lead to productive efficiency. There's a third type of efficiency called dynamic efficiency. And we tend to assume that in this perfectly competitive market, all the products are standardised, they're homogenous. In other words, there's not a great deal of scope for innovation, you know, designed for one firm to produce a better product and achieve some monopoly power. So in that sense, some economists claim that perfect competition is, is not a good market structure for a lot of, for example, research and development and product and process innovations. Indeed, you could argue that it's in monopolistic or oligopolistic markets that the best environment is created for research and development and innovation to flourish. But we'll come back to these types of efficiency when we look at monopoly and also when we consider contestable markets. Here's a key diagram to show one aspect of economic efficiency and perfect competition. It takes us back to the idea that Supernormal profits lead to an increase in the supply of firms uh, supplying products to the market. The market supply curve therefore shifts out and the price is driven down by the forces of competition to a level where each firm just makes normal profit. So for the firm on the right hand side, uh, price is P2, they're a price taker. And at output Q2, marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So they're profit maximising. But they're just making normal profit and they're also at the minimum point of their average cost curve. So we have productive efficiency at that point. I think it's quite important just to finish off with perfect competition to, to be able to evaluate the assumptions of the model. It's often said that perfect competition is, is a market structure that's essentially outdated and, and not worthy of study. And the assumptions are pretty strong and we can certainly challenge and question them. You know, the assumption, for example, that firms are just pure passive price takers. That's not what we see in the real world. Most firms, nearly all firms, have some amount of price setting power. That's what they do. They compete with each other. And of course, we assume in perfect competition that the products are standardised. They're homogenous. Whereas in the real world, we live in a world of markets that are completely differentiated from each other. And they're heavily branded and marketed as being different. So that's clearly an important difference. We live in a world also of complexity, uh, from the latest version of electric cars to the complexity built into consumer electronic products. Consumers don't have perfect information, for example, about what's the best brand of smartphone to buy or what's the best washing machine for a family of four. So in a world of complexity, we can't assume that consumers have full information. They don't. And there are transactions costs in searching for it. Even in a world of Google and price comparison sites, in a world of big data, you can't avoid the search costs if you're looking for the best deal. 
And in fact, digital technology can often reinforce monopoly power, much as it can increase price transparency and competition. And crucially, we also live in a world where businesses are obsessed often with trying to control intellectual property. In many markets, there are patent races as companies uh, race to achieve a patent and a trademark protection on a new invention. So the idea of intellectual property and control of inputs and things, the vertical integration of the supply chain, uh, the real messy world in which we live, they're all ignored by the perfect competition model. And indeed, as we've talked about in previous topic videos, there are in every industry barriers to entry and barriers to exit. There are costs in entering a market as well as risks, and there are some expenses involved in leaving a market. So the assumption of free entry and exit can clearly be challenged. And once you start talking about barriers to entry, then you're moving more towards monopolistic and oligopolistic market structures. That said, I think it's important to be aware of some of the key characteristics of, of genuine competition be between firms. When you have a lot of firms competing intensively, aggressively with each other, that nearly always brings down the price level for consumers. And you could bring in a really good micro term here from year one, and that's the out of cross price elasticity. So when you have lots of close substitutes and consumers are willing and able to switch their spending, then you're going to get a lot of competition and oftentimes prices will be, be driven down by those forces. And uh, low barriers to entry do exist in many markets, particularly smaller scale businesses. We often have the new flow of firms coming in or established firms entering a market using their brand name. I think it's probably true to say that if you look at competitive markets compared to monopoly, the profitability of suppliers is lower than in a monopolistic market. So competition does keep profit margins down. And I think you could also argue that uh, when competitive conditions exist, then you're likely to see much greater entrepreneurial activity, particularly in industries where small firms, uh, perhaps some disruptive uh, innovative businesses think they can target a, a particular niche of the market, a profitable segment of the industry, and uh, take on some big established players. So in terms of economic efficiency, when we think about perfect competition, uh, I think it's probably true to say that competition helps firms move towards productive efficiency. We'll come on in future topic videos to look at the concepts of X inefficiency and productive slack. When there's a lack of genuine competition, it's often the case that costs are higher than they would normally be. And it's the threat of competition often, which is a driving dynamic for firms being dynamically efficient. They have to keep running to avoid falling back. And it's the threat of genuine new competitors coming in, which can be the biggest stimulus in markets to dynamic efficiency. So we've had a little look in this video about the three concepts of allocative, productive and dynamic efficiency. In perfect competition, the first two are achieved. Allocative, price equals marginal cost. Productive, outputs at minimum average cost. We have some questions over whether perfect competition leads to dynamic efficiency. But once we nudge a little bit away from perfect competition, just to talk in general terms about competitive markets, then we are more likely to see dynamic efficiency in markets. And in the long run, of course, that's good for consumers. Thanks for tuning in to this topic video. See you again sometime soon.